Are you ready for an adventure? I hope so, because we've got one for you. First of all, you need to go get your braided twist book. Maybe a cup of coffee or a soda, something like that. This is a long video. You don't have to watch it in one step. You can follow along as we go through each step so you can see it, understand this technique thoroughly. It's a, an unusual technique. It's important once you get that basic, oh my goodness, there's so many fun things you can do. Please don't think this is a, oh, buy this tool and it makes one thing. It makes lots of things. And I'd like to show you that now. One thing we can vary once we've mastered the basic technique is the size. This is a chili pepper placemat. So much fun. All the different food and novelty fabrics ideal for a placemat. Here's one that's much longer. The end cap here, the end cap here. It's made with layer cakes of Kansas Trouble where I've used the darker shade for A and the lighter shade for B. To piece these, I use the 45 degree paper template that's included in the book. You can also use an acrylic one. I've finished the edges with a blanket stitch that's on my machine. Here's one that's bold and bright, and it combines using pieced 45s for the A and solid floral fabrics for your B. So it's a mix of solid and pieced. Once again, we've combined a pieced A with a solid B, and I've used soft Maywood flannel. In the B area, I've added an applique. The challenge of the applique was the placement, and so if you look in your book, this insert page shows the visible area in the hidden area within your rectangle. It can be a place for you to showcase all your different skills, whether it's computerized machine embroidery, free motion machine embroidery, hand embroidery, fussy cutting, trapunto quilting, painting, jelly plate printing, dot painting, crazy piecing. So many things that you like to do can be showcased in this format. This is the bonus blossom. My mom suggested I make one of these for her round table. And this is what I'm gonna give her for her birthday, so don't anyone tell her. See how the stripes chevron? Kind of cool, huh? Let's look at it from the back side. Isn't that neat? It makes it reversible. So the blossoms, no, they're not twisted and they're not braided, but they're made with a braided twist tool and they're included in the book. Recognize this runner? It's the one on our cover. Turquoise is our A, purple is our B, and the backing is K. So what we're going to do now is we're going to make this runner step by step together. In part one, we're going to be making two end caps. Notice they're identical. We'll start with an A square first. You take your tool and you'll see A listed on here. We'll rotate that around so that this A lines up and this A lines up. And you'll notice there's an arrow. The arrow tells you what side of the ruler that you're going to cut on. So because the arrow points to the outside, I'll take my rotary cutter and I'll cut on the outside. And that will give me somewhat of a quarter circle. Step two we have a B rectangle. For our B rectangle, we will take our tool and we'll find the B lines. Take the tool, and this time we're going to rotate it in the opposite direction, like this. Line up the B line here, here, and here. Now, if you follow the arrows, you see that it's pointing to the inside edge of the tool, and that's the edge that we'll cut on. So here I go. Our next step is to sew the A to the B. To do this, we're going to pin, and here's a little trick I'd like to show you. I fold the B piece in half right sides together, but the A piece, I fold it in half wrong sides together. I'm only focusing on the curved edge. Don't worry that this doesn't match up even. It's not a true quarter of, an, quarter of a circle. Okay, now because I folded that way, see how nicely those two folded edges nest together? So right in that center place, I'll get my pins, and right in the center place, I'm going to pin it at the fold. 
Now, I'm going to bring this straight edge over and match it with this straight edge. If you've ever put a collar on a shirt, you know how important this little step is. Well, it works the same way for the braided twist. And again, we're going to put straight edge to straight edge and pin. You need at least three pins. Don't try to do it with fewer than that. Now we'll turn it over because when we're going to sew, we'll sew it with the B piece on top and the curved piece on the bottom. If you're more comfortable, you can spread this out and you'll notice it fits perfectly. You may want to add two more pins and I think I will. Sew from the opposite side with a B on the top. It's much easier this way. So first I'll put this under here, quarter inch foot, and I'm going to take a few stitches and then I'm going to back stitch and continue sewing. You can just slow this curve stitching down. Because it was cut properly, it'll fit properly. Fit together exactly and just work with your fingers until those two edges are together and stitch a quarter of an inch all the way around. And again, when you get to the end, you want to back stitch. Lift this up. Clip your threads on both ends. Now we have our A sewn to the B. When you turn it over, you can see that I've pressed my seam allowances going towards the A. For this next cut, I'm going to cut this with the wrong side up. If you look at your braided twist tool, you'll see a curved line that says place on curved stitches. It's only on one side. This way you can put this exactly on the stitches, then make sure that the points are exactly on the edge of the tool. And it might take a little wiggle wiggle to get this right, but once it's right, then you're ready to cut your half circle. There you go. You noticing these scraps? Wait till I show you what we can do with these. This is fabric A. Right side up is fine. It's one layer. And all I have to do is take the braided twist, center it approximately with the edges lined up to the edge. And we're going to cut around the outside edge. Before we're ready to sew this, these two pieces together, we're going to need to clip. Okay, so our next step is to mark our scissors. We're going to mark this side if you're right-handed. We're going to slide it over here so that the tip of the scissors is right at a quarter of an inch. Then I'll take my marker, fine tip, and mark right at, whoops, hold it still, and mark right at a quarter of an inch. We're going to fold it exactly in half and we're going to take our little clipping sh scissors. I hold it right at a quarter of an inch and I've also got my scissors marked at a quarter of an inch. And I'm going to clip. That marks the center point. I'm going to do the same thing on this one. So I'll come in here and again I'll hold it just like this at a quarter of an inch and I also have that on my scissors. Now we're ready to put these together. We're only going to sew part way and we're always going to sew the two A pieces together, the ones that the colors match, not this end. It's going to be like, uh, like you would a tree skirt. We've pinned together our end cap. We're only going to sew halfway. And so our pin, our first pin, is right where that clip is, and that's where we'll start sewing. We're only going to sew the lower part of this, and you know you've got the right half because it'll be the two matching A fabric. Set your needle right where that clip is, stitch a few stitches, and back stitch. 
Again, make sure you're stitching a full quarter of an inch. You don't want a scant stitch here. Get to the end and back stitch. Pull it out of here. Clip your threads. And I suggest you always keep your threads clipped all the way through this process rather than waiting till the end. So now you can see the stitching is not in the clipping portion. And when we open this up, that's been backstitched and it'll hold because that point right there will have a lot of strain when you're going to twist it. I want to talk to you about fleece and it comes in a package like this. It is 45 by 72. It'll make a lot of table runners. It's, it's kind of hard. Where do, you, where do you start when you've got a piece of fleece? Look, this big and get an exact cut is difficult. So what I suggest to you is cutting it into strips and then cutting it into rectangles. Make those rectangles just a tad bit bigger, then cut them the exact size. So once I have my piece, I will square up the corner like this. And I'm going to turn this piece around because the edge that I just cut is nice and sharp, where the edge in the package is, it could be a little wavy. Because for this rectangle, I need an exact size, ready to cut our fleece. Again, it's very important that this be the exact size of rectangle that the book suggests. You're going to fold it exactly in half. The fold is to the top. We'll take the ruler, the braided twist ruler, and place it so that the fleece lines are along the edge of the, of the fleece, folded fleece piece. And I want you to come in here and check. Make sure that that's where your fold is. Because if this is a cut edge, you need to redo your piece. Once you're sure, you're going to cut along the inside edge of the tool, like this and you'll get the exact size that'll fit in your braided twist fabric piece. I'm also going to cut my K, which is my backing. And again, the edges of the tool line up with the edges of the fabric. And we're going to need two of those. So here's my second one. And again, we're gonna cut around the outside edge. Put the two together and fold them in half exactly. And we're going to clip those, again, exactly a quarter of an inch in, exactly in the center. And again, we have our marked scissors, and we're cutting right there. That marks the center point. Take the two clipped background pieces and sew them, starting right at the clip. Set your needle in, take a few stitches, and back stitch. Back stitch. Now that we've sewn this seam and pressed it open, you can see that we have something like a tree skirt. You've got a circle with one part of it open. We've done the same thing with our lining fabric here. And again, one side is open. Now we're gonna put these two together. So we're going to take our A and B and put them on top of our K. We're going to match the bottom seam <coughs> here and pin that seam, align it, and we will come up to the top, open that up and align those two edges and pin that. Pin on the sides. Bring these two edges together like this and pin. And now we're ready to sew. So we'll open this up to get it out of the way. Bring this under the presser foot. And as I sew, I make sure that my edges are even. We're going to start out with a few stitches and then make sure that you back stitch a few stitches. And continue. I'm going to sew with exact quarter inch seams.
here. We might put this out of your way. We continue on around. We get to the end and then we're going to back stitch. Stitching all the way around and this side is open. Let's just see the back. Okay, that's the backing fabric. Right sides are together. And now we're ready to add the fleece. We want to test the fleece with the iron. Each brand of fleece is a little different. Some, like the Bozal, require a much lower temperature than others. You want to make sure that the temperature isn't so high that it shrinks up your fleece or melts it. Don't want to ruin your iron nor your fabric. You also want to make sure that your temperature is high enough that it does indeed bond. Once you're sure of that, we're ready to proceed and we'll take our piece of fleece and make sure that the fusible side goes down. Again, each brand is a little different. And with the end cap piece, we're going to tuck that little corner right under the seam allowance. And when we get to this side, you can see we want to make sure that we've got exactly a quarter of an inch right there and that our fleece comes to the edge right where our stitching is. Why this is so important is that the edge of the fleece is what determines the outer edge of your project. If there's too much spacing between your stitching and your fleece, it's not going to lay smooth. It'll kind of flatten down. It just won't look as nice and crisp. You also want to make sure that the fleece doesn't go over the top of your stitching. If that happens, your stitching will never be the edge. It's just going to fight with the batting and you'll end up having a little lump and you don't want that either. So once you're satisfied with its placement, now you're ready to press. If you've got shot of steam, that's what you need because it usually takes steam for this fleece to bond properly. So take your time. You want to make sure you get a nice bond. Got to let it cool <laughs> before you can test it. Once it's cool enough that you can touch, you can check gently and you can see that yes indeed it has bonded. So we'll turn it to the other side. Now we're going to get the other piece of it. And again, this corner here is going to go up underneath the seam allowance like this. And it may take a little adjusting to make sure everything's just right. So we've got a quarter of an inch here and all of our stitching is showing. Okay, when you're happy with that, you're ready to bond the second half. If your iron does the shot of steam, it's perfect. If it just steams, that's okay. And you're just going to have to test it if you don't have a steam iron. You may end up needing to mist it with a little bit of water. So you can see by this cloud, I'm pretty generous with my steam. And I let it completely cool, which takes a little bit. Because if you don't let it cool, you really can't tell. But you can see here that gently you can tug at it and you can see that, yes, indeed, it is bonded. Once it's cool enough to handle and it's been bonded, you can turn this inside out. So what we're going to do is slip our hand in here, open it up, grab a hold of it here, and turn it inside out. And then once it's turned inside out, put your hand in there and just smooth along that edge. Just keep working it until you get a nice, smooth, rounded edge like this. Let's try the other side. Get just the way you want it. If it doesn't seem to lay flat, so just work on it, okay? When it looks nice and flat, then, and we don't have any Okay, see that right there? We don't want that to happen. Get those raw edges together. Once they're together, now we can set it again from the front side with our iron. So can you see that we have a nice crisp edge like this? And on both sides, we have our fabrics edge stitch. For our end cap, we need to do edge stitching. And we're going to do this one section at a time. So I will pin one side out of the way and it's going to isolate this piece. And you see that I make sure 
that those two edges are right together and pin it. I'm going to show you from the back. See how you can now you, it goes together pretty good. That's what you're looking for. Sometimes it, if it's not, then you want to put those together. Put a few pins in. Now to edge stitch, I'm going to stitch inside about an eighth of an inch. So I'm going to start right here on the edge and back stitch. If you have a machine with a built-in walking foot, use it. And I get to the end and back stitch. Cut. Cut over here. You can see. There you've got it. It's edge stitched. Now we're ready to do the other side. And so we're going to put this side and take it out of the way. And we're going to turn it over. And again, make sure that those little squares, see right there, those little corners, come right together and pull the edges together and, and pin. Keeping this out of your way, we're going to slip it under here and stitch an eighth of an inch from the edge. Notice that I'm doing this from the back side. It's just easier to get to. Okay, a little back stitch there and stitch. Back stitch on the end. Unpin this and we'll look at this. So you can see that both sides have been edge stitched and nothing's going anywhere. In part one, we've made two identical end caps. We can set these aside for now. In part two, we're going to be making half circles. Two of the A fabric and two of the B fabric. Just like we've done earlier, where we've cut the half circles, now we're ready to cut the rest of the rectangles. Lining up the edge of the tool to the edge of the fabric and cutting around this outer edge. So you've got A's, B's, and your K, which is your back. We have a half circle of backing fabric and a half circle of A. We're going to put these two together, right sides facing. We will pin here, here, and a couple of places in between. And we'll take those to the sewing machine and sew them. We will also take a B half circle and put it on your backing. Pin it in the same way. And we will take these to the sewing machine and sew these together. Now we have our K fabric with the A fabric sewn, quarter of an inch, and we're ready to add the fleece. Here's our fleece. This is one of the most important parts of this project, and that is the placement of the fleece. You'll need to have a quarter of an inch along the straight edge, and you want to have your fleece go right up to the edge of the stitching, but never over it. And so you might find with your fingertips adjusting that to get it just right. Why this is so important is because if you have too much of a gap between the stitching and the edge of the fleece, it won't give you a nice crisp edge. And if your fleece happens to go over the stitching, you'll have a lump there and it won't lay flat. So both ways, it's got to be just right. Also important that you have a quarter of an inch along the straight edge. That quarter of an inch is where your center seam will be. If you want that to lay flat, that's the key. And I've spoken with a few people who have tried this project and often this is where they've made the mistake. This has got to be a quarter of an inch. Otherwise, you're getting your fleece caught up in that center seam. Okay, the next thing that's very important about the fleece is the temperature. Each fleece brand is a little bit different and I'm using Bozel for this particular project and I know that it requires a much lower temperature iron. If not, it tends to draw up and shrink. Some of the others tend to stretch out. So what I do before I get to this stage is I'll take a scrap of my fleece, a scrap of the fabric, and I'll test it. 
make sure it's not drying up and make sure it's sticking. Okay, once I'm sure, then I'm ready to use my iron. And if you've got one with a shot of steam, now's the time to use it. And this is kind of a slow, deliberate process. You don't want to rush this. I'm going to let it sit for a minute. And once it's cooled enough, I can tell you that, oh, where is it not stuck? A couple places right here on the end. So I will go back over to those places and give that spot a little bit more steam. Once I'm satisfied and it's cooled, again, you don't want to burn your fingers, then we're ready to turn it inside out. To do that, we just reach inside and turn it inside out like this. Take your hand and just smooth it. Use your fingers right along that edge. The edges should come together and everything's nice and smooth. And you can press it again. Like this, turn it over. Make sure everything is nice and smooth, just the way you want it. Press it again. And because of our careful placement, we've got a nice clean edge. Can you see that? And the next thing I need to do is check to see if they line up. And you can see that I'm seeing a little of the A. So what I want to do is make sure that those edges are exactly together. And I will put a few pins to hold them. But it's best to make sure you have those edges right together. And you might keep that in mind while you're doing your ironing. Stitch this, the two layers together. That will keep them from shifting when we're sewing them together and when we're turning. So to edge stitch, I put it under here about an eighth of an inch from the edge and I just sew. And I do trim. And if there's some little threads from earlier, I'm going to trim those as well. Trim here, and again, see those little threads? Just trim that off, keep it nice and neat, and continue to do that on all of those. And now we're ready to clip it. And so I'm going to fold that in half exactly, and I will hold it with my thumbnail, or fingernail, right at a quarter of an inch. Now I'm going to take my scissors, line the marked line that we put on there right with the edge of the fabric and we're going to cut. When we open that up, can you see that little gap? That needs to be exactly a quarter of an inch in, exactly in the center. If it's any deeper, it might cause this fabric to fray, but if it's not deep enough, then when you're trying to twist it, that the intersections won't lay flat. So if you've got it and you have a lump at the intersection, make sure that your clipping is the right distance. In part two, we've made two A half circles and two B half circle. Part three is where we put everything together. We have made two identical end caps. We have two A half circles and two B half circles. We're ready to lay it out. So first of all, we'll put our end cap right side up. We'll take our end cap and put it wrong side down on the other side. Concentrate on this side first. If you were looking at it vertically, like the, the way it's in the book, this is your left side. And we've got the purple here at the bottom, which is your B fabric. So we're going to put purple on these two sides, or B on, this is your B side. But this side is up, so this side is going to go down. This side's down, so this one will go up. And this one goes down. So it's right side up, right side down. Right side up, right side down. Okay, now we're ready to pin. When we pin, we want to be accurate. So we're going to take the clip at the center of this B, this B right here, and we're going to put it right on the edge Those two match exactly. Then we're going to come here. You might want to pull this away. 
we're going to get that corner here on our end cap and the corner of our B. We're going to match those edges and pin. Now I think it's easier to put another pin in here like that. Okay, now we come to our next one. This is our B with the right side up. We're going to match the end of it to this clipped place right here, like that. I'm going to pin it here, and I'm going to come down here. See the clip? There's the tip. Match those two edges together. Make sure these fit. Make sure those edges are together. Put another pin in, and now we come to our end cap. We put the edge of our end cap here, right to the tip, right where the clip is, tip to the clip, and we're going to pin this. Let's get this one out of the way. You can even pin those out of the way. So you can isolate what you want to see. And what we're isolating is the tip of the B to the corner of the end cap, the corner center of the end cap. Match those exactly and pin. Now, be sure that these edges are all aligned and pin again. And next, we're going to go to our sewing machine and sew this. One thing I'd like to point out that I didn't stress before is if you were looking at a roof, the water would run this way. The, it, this one overlaps this one, this one overlaps this one, this one overlaps this one. On the other side, it'll be the opposite. Now that I've pinned that out of the way, I'm ready to sew. Okay, now I'm ready to sew. I've got this piece, I've got it exposed where I want to sew. This is not a fast process. You do want to have these pieces folded out of the way. And we're going to come in here and you want to use exact quarter inch seams and it's very important to back stitch. So I'll take a few stitches and back stitch. And now continue all the way down. If you have a built-in walking foot, it's sure to your advantage. Take your time, sew this together. If you're at all worried about this, you may baste it in for your first time. And now when you get to the bottom, you want to back stitch. Okay, we have our B side sewn, which is the left side if you're looking at it vertically. And now we're ready to add our two A pieces. This side is up, so we know that this A needs to be face down. The difference this time is we're going to slip the new one under the previous one. And so this one's down, so the next one needs to be up. But again, we'll put it underneath. And then our last one, you can see that this one is on top, and it goes underneath. So you have right side up, right side down, right side up, right side down. And now we want to pin. The pinning is just like it was before, where you're going to match a tip to the, the clip. Tip to clip. We'll bring that to the, so that you get that little corner right there. We make sure that the, that the tip is right at the clip. And again, on this side, there's the clip, there's the tip. Pin those together. If you were to look at these, from overhead. Can you see where the two come together? Tip to clip and our little corner to the tip and pin. Okay, now you're wondering how am I going to get in there and sew that? Well, we started here when we sewed the B side, but when we sew the A side, we're going to start on this end and I'll have to turn this around like this. And I can take my B side and pull it out of the way to expose the seam that needs to be sewn. And if it'll help, I'll put a pin or two in there to keep it out of my way. Whatever it takes to get that underneath the machine, everything out of the way, so I'm focused just on that quarter inch seam. This is a different sort of sewing, and sometimes you have to just sort of fiddle to get it just where you want it to go. We make sure all the edges are even. We make sure we're gonna do a quarter of an inch seam. Now we're ready to start. 
going to take a few stitches and then back stitch. You definitely want to back stitch because you're going to be turning this. See how that wants to slide out of the way? Well, I'm basting it and I can always sew it again a second time. But it did kind of want to hop right off the... And every machine has a different amount of pressure on the pressure foot. It's a relatively short seam. Take your time. Okay, when we get to the bottom, again, make sure that the corner and the end match up. Quarter inch seam, back stitch, and there we go. Now let's go back and check our seam because I know I felt it. See, you can see where it wobbled. That's going to happen and take a little deeper seam. You might be wondering why I didn't just stop and refilm it. Because you got to see that sometimes wobbles happen. Okay, let's look at this again. We've got both sides sewn, and let's just review. We started with our end cap up, and then we, this is going to be our B side. So here's B down, B up, and B down. And all of the layers are going in this direction. So the one that you add always is on top. When we did this side, this is our A side, it's the right side, and we have A up, A down, A up, A down, and all of the layers, as you add one, you're slipping it under the, the other one. So all of these layers go in this direction. We are finished sewing, and we're done with part three. We've sewn the two center seams and connected all the pieces. Now we're ready to go on to part four. And that's where the magic happens, because now we twist. Put your hand here firmly and twist the last circle, the end cap, all the way over. Move your hand up. We're going to twist again, and I'm going to turn the last two circles both at once. Place your hand at the end and twist all of the rest of the circles. The left end cap never gets twisted. Our circles are twisted. Our pieces are in the right place but it's not yet flat. So now our goal is to make it smooth because that way we'll keep the magic of the twist our little secret. So what we're going to do is we're going to come to this corner and we will tuck our seam allowances out of our way and we'll give it a press. Okay, now we're going to tuck these seam allowances out of the way and give it a press. You may want to rotate this around and now the seam allowances are going to go in the other direction. So they're going to go back and forth and back and forth because they're floating, always floating. And we will be fusing them and their seam allowances are never fused in. So when I get it to where I like it, I'm going to give it a press. And what we're doing is we're flattening that seam. And now let's turn it over and do the same thing. So it may look good on the front, but look, nothing's aligned on the back. That's not a surprise. You're just going to come here, push those seam allowances underneath out of your way. So what I call it is, I think in the book I called it, you kind of lock these two together. So what you're doing is you're pushing the seam allowances so that they match right here. Now we're ready for fusing. I'm going to use the Wonder Web. Uh, it's a Pellon product. It's a quarter of an inch wide. So I'm going to start my fusing on the back side and I'm only going to fuse the first inch. And again, I've said it several times, I know, but we're going to push the seam allowances out of your way. So you're only going to use about inch long pieces. Be careful not to get that caught up in your iron. I've definitely done that mistake. So here I've got it. I'm happy with it. It feels good. So I'm going to place that piece in here like this, put this on top and fuse. Okay, that's warm there, so I'm going to go to the next one. Again, push those seam allowances gently out of the way, because then that makes the contact. Make sure those seams are aligned right here. Take your piece of fusible, like that, and we're going to press it. The next one, seam allowances out of the way. Make sure your seam is aligned, just the way you want it, and fuse that one. You're trying to get that fusible right to the edge, and you're trying to make sure that everything is laying flat. Because once you fuse it, it's fused. 
get these pieces, just hold them. I'm going to flip this around. See how that's held in its place? Now we're going to push the seam allowances in the opposite direction. So come in here and push them out of your way. And you can feel along there. Do you feel anything that doesn't feel right? Fix it now before you get it fused in there. Again, I'm sticking that. Can you see that right there? Here. Make sure that the seam is all straight. The fusible isn't showing, but it's to the edge. Give it a little bit of steam. Hold it for a minute. Go to your next one. Again, seam allowances out of your way. And see, there's no, there's no batting in that seam allowance. And so it will stay where you want it to go. I'm making sure the seam is straight. And I have one more to go here. Push these out of the way. Okay, over here it looks like I've got a little bit of a lump. I'm going to kind of push that, check it. Does it feel nice and flat? Do I feel anything? No, it feels pretty good. This piece goes under here, and now I'm going to turn it over. Okay, just like before, they don't, they don't look good on this side, but we'll make them right. Now, these flip-flopping seam allowances, you press them the other way. If it's still too hot, wait till it cools off. You don't want any burned fingers. But again, we're trying to fuse this piece to this piece with no seam allowances involved. And see, I can still put my hand through here so I can adjust any way I need to adjust to make sure that it's flat. And as many times as I'll iron it back and forth, by the time you're done, it should be flat. Okay, so again, I'm going to separate some little one inch pieces, approximately. Okay, I'm going to come in here, put that little piece there, make sure everything looks straight. Okay. Okay, here we go on this one. Seam allowances to the other side. And we're going to put the fusible right there. Make sure everything lines up. Okay, like this one for example, let's, let's take a peek. It's kind of gotten twisted. So see, I could come in here and fix it. I can do it however I want, you know. You're kind of, you're the boss of these seam allowances. Okay. You've got a little thread. Clip it now or stick it under there. Make sure it's just the way you want it. Okay, that looks good. Get my piece of fusible, and I hold it just at the center. And you know, you might be thinking this is kind of fussy. It is, but once I'm done with this, I'm gonna be done. Okay, it's warm to the touch. <laughs> so I'm gonna flip it around. Okay, now I want you to look. See how much flatter that looks? Much better, huh? And the seam is nice and straight. I feel it. Nope. No bumps. Now I'm ready to finish the, the bonding part. I can use a little bit longer pieces this time. It's pretty flexible. So I'll just slip this in here. Make sure it looks good. And steam it. If you would like to finish this with stitching, we will have a video on how to stitch these edges in different ways. So be watching for that. You can see where the little ridge is and that will help you know where to put place the fusible. And now you can see that it's all fused on the front. If you want to, you can fuse your back. If not, you can just leave it as is. So it's entirely up to you if you want to fuse that. I probably will. To summarize the finishing steps, iron from the front and iron from the back. Fuse from the back one inch, fuse from the front one inch. Then fuse the rest of the seam on the front and then do the same on the back. There you go. No binding, no hand stitching, 
No quilting is necessary. It's ready to go. Decorate your table. Give it as a gift. You're set. Our basic braided twist. Those A and B areas of the braided twist are just perfect for showcasing your fiber art talents. So be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel for our upcoming showcase series. You can download a list of fusible fleece that I talked about earlier, as well as diagrams for the most efficient cutting on our website. We will update these as we find out new ideas or discover new products. And you might even sign up for our newsletter on our website because we have a lot of fun things planned. Our website is www.phillipsfiberart.com and we hope to see you there.